Hello everyone. Hi Vicky and welcome. Welcome to Moodle MOOC 4 in the month of June. Uh, my name is Nellie and you can see Vicky there in the background. She's right behind me actually. Where's my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get started. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add as we go, feel free to use the chat box. I encourage it, and I hope, Vicki, you don't mind if people uh, reflect and bounce off ideas as they listen to you. Today's session is really, really important in my life because it's about videos, and I am so excited about uh, learning how to improve the way I make my videos, and there's certainly a lot to improve there. A little bit about our presenter. There you can see her there with a star because she truly is a star. Vicki is an English language teacher. She's a teacher trainer, and she really does do all she can to make uh, teaching and learning easy for um, everyone around the globe. She's a writer and video producer, and I've often wondered where you got your training uh, at Simple English Videos. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to Simple English Videos, I suggest you Google it and do it as we go through this, Simple English Videos. She's an award-winning author of best-selling English courses for Oxford University Press and Pearson. So I'm going to stop yakking here and let Vicky take over. Thank you for joining us, Vicky. It's really a pleasure, and I'm excited. So, <laughs> so am I. I'm thrilled to be here, and it's lovely to meet everyone. Um, can you tell me, everyone? I'm curious about you. I mean, that was about me. I would love to know what your um, background is. Are you? Um, my background is I'm an English teacher. I'm, I've written a lot of textbooks, as Nelly mentioned. Um, and I trained, I trained in the normal sort of way that English teachers do. I did a, a Kelter certificate, then I did an, um, a Delta, and then an MA, and this sort of thing. But what about you? Is there anybody here who doesn't teach English and who's teaching other subjects, perhaps science or anything like that? I'm watching the chat to see what you tell me. What subject? Oh, chemistry. Excellent, Hassan. Community manager and business administrator. Wonderful. IT. Great. Another English teacher. Um, I'm an English. I'm an. In America, I'd be called an ESL teacher, and in England, I would be called an EFL teacher. So English is a foreign language. In fact, actually, my background is business English. I specialize in lots of business English over the years. I've, I've written lots of business English titles. Um, law, we've got law coming in. Oh, and another English teacher in business skills. And now we've got a, a, a mad scientist. Wow, this is great. OK. Um, Nelly, I don't know. Um, is my video alive in the chat? In the um, in the stream. I hope it is. I hope everyone can see me because I can't see myself. Perhaps we don't need uh, yeah. to Oh, maybe it's down at the bottom. Maybe you've made it hidden. But you are very, very clear. Super clear. Excellent. We... Excellent. Good, good, good. Then I'm, gonna, I'm going to start off straight away and, and with, um, my, with a video just to introduce myself, because I know that everybody lights up when you put a video on. That's what Barry, my friend Barry, tells me anyway. So let me just pull up. We both have window seats. We can't sit together. Can I have an aisle seat, please? Yes, I can give you an aisle seat and a window seat together. Thank you. How many bags are you checking in? One. Two. Well, this is hand luggage. I'm sorry. I'm afraid that's too big for hand luggage. It won't fit in the overhead locker. I told you. Can you put the bags on the belt just here? Certainly. 
Here, can you put these in your purse? Just take one. Give me your bag. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm sorry about this. That's okay. Did you pack these bags yourselves? Yes. And have they been with you at all times? Yes. yes. Did anyone give you anything to carry for them? No. no. Great. I don't like this book. Forget it. We're going to Istanbul. Here are your boarding passes. Your flight boards at 8.30 from gate 16C. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great flight. Bye now. Did you understand it? My media to start for disaster. So I want to make sure that when I'm delivering videos that I'm not giving too much information too fast. And one of the ways I used to do it was by trying to limit myself to videos that were just one minute long. And I set off with a point with um, that sort of goal as I began. Um, and I was going to show them to you, but I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to risk it. I think we'll save our messages about slow video internet connection. I don't know why. This must be Comcast or something. I'll try turning it on now. Um, and um, so what can we teach in a minute was one of my obsessions as I began. And as a language teacher, that meant that I couldn't start teaching some of the big things like what tenses or te te big tenses or things like that. And I used to go for things like tricky vocabulary, just picking a couple of words that the students would confuse and trying to explain those in the time we had available. And one of the videos I was going to show you, which was just one minute long, was about, say, the difference between being alone and lonely. And it told a little story about my husband leaving me and me being happy that he'd left because I had time alone when I could dance around the house and eat biscuits in bed and things like that. Um, I think storytelling, the little story that you can tell in a video, can be very powerful a good way of grabbing the student's attention. And what a story needs is a character you care about, um, something interesting happening to them that might surprise them, that might surprise the audience, perhaps a little twist. And you want to see the changes that it has on them over the course of a story. And whereas we used to spend a lot of time telling stories, what you find on video these days is two-minute dramas. It's terrific. You get people telling videos and just two, telling stories in just two minutes. Um, in my past, I wrote some videos for Oxford University Press, and we used to have something like an hour or an hour and a half, and we would break it up into sections to make it manageable for students. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. I've just moved the microphone. I hope that helps. Um, and so we used to break these, these courses up a little bit, but it never really... Um, the, the thing is, limiting the time that we spent on videos, I think, was very important. Now, in the video I was hoping to show you at the beginning, Jason Levine was talking about the accessibility of online learning.
And accessibility, the internet, the faster internet, means that video is very much come of an age when we can all use it. Notice this is the most ironic slide I could be showing you where I'm showing you about the buffering in the past and how videos flow now. And of course, today, we're actually looking at a situation where I can't show you the videos because of the buffering. We're going to try in a minute. But hopefully, these problems will solve themselves and we'll be able to make this work. Now, I have a question for you. Do you all use TED Talks? Do you send your students on it, off want to watch TED Talks? Absolutely. They're so useful for so many different subjects, aren't they? And this is actually the most popular TED Talk on the internet, apparently, on the TED site. And I wonder if you can guess for me what the most popular length of a TED Talk is. Yeah, Ed Ted. I love Ed Ted, Neves. Brilliant. Any guesses here? It's a, it's a, it's a, TED Ed is a channel of the TED Talks, which is designed for educators. Three minutes, nine minutes, 18 or 12. Yep. In fact, the most popular length is 18 minutes. But of course, a lot of the people watching TED Talks are native speakers. So from my they, they're able to understand a lot better than my students will be able to. But even your students, if you're trying to deliver some complex subject like chemistry, law, we heard, then probably you're going to want to limit the, the length of your video. And so these days, I haven't, um, I haven't worried too much about keeping videos as short. This guy is interesting, Paul Maglioni. He runs an interesting internet site for students with lots of videos called English Attack. And on their site, you can see all sorts of different videos, video clips from YouTube, um, movie trailers. And what he finds is that the optimal length for his learners is one to two minutes. Now, they're being able to pick from a wide variety of videos. and that their choice is the ones that's one, the videos that are one or two minutes long. Ultimately, I think it comes down to what you want to tell your students. If you've, it's the message you want to give should dictate the length of the video that you're making. Just before we, we leave the subject of TED Talks, I don't know if you've pointed out to your students, but there's often a little button at the bottom saying interactive tape script. My students' eyes light up when I show them this, because when they click on that button, they're able to see the script and to jump around in it. And seeing them so positive about it inspired me to set up my own site. We show movie trailers on the site and videos that we make. And when the students click on a video, they'll be able to see a transcript underneath. But even better, if they click on lines in the transcript, the movie moves to that point in the transcript. It's also possible, if you are making YouTube videos, to insert a transcript that will operate in the same way. So well worth doing. Now, we heard Jason telling us that one, or we should have heard Jason telling us that one of the most one of the great things about videos is so powerful. He claims the most powerful tool we have for teaching and learning language. And I think for teaching and learning almost anything. Um, why? I Probably teaching to the converted. But we can do so many different things with a video. And I'd just like to tell you about a couple of things and demonstrate a couple of things that I found very useful when I've been trying to teach with video. Things that video bring that I can't do in a normal classroom. And the first one is animations, text animations. And I'm going to try and show you a text animation video. Fingers crossed it will work because we have been having much success with this, but whoops, I've switched on the whiteboard by mistake. Sorry about that. 
are you sure you want to delete the whiteboard? Yes, I am. I actually want to go to the um, media player. One moment. They come from I'd like you to just Probably the most powerful tool we have for uh, teaching and learning language. Many English verbs. No luck here. This is very frustrating. I'm so sorry, everyone. Many. Can you, can you do me a favor? Can you put it again in the video link? Many English verbs yes. have two parts. I, I can do it. Go, of maybe, that we are, maybe that'll. It seems to be. The system seems to be overwhelming. How can I get. How can Many I get. English verbs have working. two parts. How can I find a my verb? link to it? Oh. Somewhere. Nelly, how do I get the link from the class playlist to post in the video? Oh, no, I thought you had it um, on your fingertips there. No, you can't. You have to, you can't take it from one the other, but I thought of maybe clearing it and starting all over. Okay, um, in that case, guys, if you'll just hang on a second, I'll pull up an email where I've got all the links written. Yeah, I'm hoping that will help. Somebody called, I want an explanation because I do have curly hair. But you can't see that. So, <laughs> what's that? Many English verbs have two. Let's see. Um, I'm just give me give me a second, everybody. So sorry, this is going like this. Here we go. I have no idea why. Unless we all refer our pages, uh, who knows? But, but we could, Vicky. We could, if nothing works, we could all kind of watch it separately on our own system. Yes, I'm going now to pull up. Um, I'm pulling yeah. up an email that's got the links in it. Hopefully, which um, one are you trying to? Yeah, the one, what can you 
Many English verbs have two parts. Animated text. Animated text. It's weird. Okay, let me, let me try that. Okay, let me, let me just uh, do something here. I'll just remove everything else. And let's see if that kind of gets it. Oh, no. And I've just looked at the Many English verbs have two parts. A verb. That's okay. Well, let's try this again. I have no idea why. There. Okay. Let's try just one. Now we've got too many slow connections in class. Uh, that's why it happens. Okay. I'm going to put um, a link into the, I believe this is the right one. Uh, and let me just check one, two. Whoops, no, it's the wrong one. Hang on, let me get the right link. If you could yeah. go to YouTube, I'll put a link into the chat. There's a suggestion and, here, um, Vicky, to go to do a screen yeah. to do a screen share. Yeah, that, that that usually works. I've just typed a link in the chat, which might help. Just see if that works. I can't, can't even get rid of it, you know? It just won't go away. I know. It won't go away now, can it, will it? Well, there, um, it's gone. OK, I got rid of it. No, nope. uh, no, it's, no, it's back. back. That is too weird. Yes, it, big, big problems with video today. Yes, yeah, stubborn. Um, yeah, can we screen share, Vicky? Have you ever screen shared before? Um, if I screen share, I would have to go to YouTube and show it, no. and then screen share. Oh. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, sorry. But, but I, I have to, Nelly. You do realize I've typed the link in the chat. Yes. Exactly. To YouTube. Okay. So I'll, it, it, I think it will have much the same effect. So I'll paste it again. And if folks would like to click on that, they'll be able to see okay. two text okay. animations. All right. I'm going to do it too, so because I'm recording this. OK, there we go. Great. Many English verbs have two parts, a verb and another small word. We can say, put the strawberry in and put in the strawberry. But notice what happens if you say it. Put it in. We can't say put in it. This is wrong. We can say turn the blender on, turn on the blender, turn it on. But we can't say turn on it. There are lots more verbs like this. Let's look at them. Notice the word order of these questions. We often use indirect questions with strangers when they're asking for information and we want to be polite. You know if the train to New York is on time. Yeah, I mean, it is. You know if there's a restaurant car on this train? No. If it's a question with a yes or no answer, we can use if. We can use whether in the same way. Something else. We generally only use indirect questions at the start of 
Okay, hopefully you've all seen it now. I'm going to try turning on my video screen. You never know. At least we might be able to see me in the in the in the video. Now, now, um, you saw two different videos there. Obviously, I'm teaching language, so text is quite handy. And doing things with text there that I can't do on a whiteboard in the classroom. If you're a science teacher, then the possibility for animating pictures as well would be very powerful. So I think it's one of the aspects of video that we can bring that, that is really quite remarkable. And I just want to show you what happens with my, um, with my YouTube ratings when I put those sorts of animations on. If you look at the indirect questions um, slide here, what you're looking at is what YouTube tells you about how your video is rating compared to other videos that are the same length. And you'll see that line going across. And where those were bumps in that, those bumps are actually where I was doing text animations. So I think it's something that students respond to. You know, it meant that people were going back and watching that bit. Um, another thing that I think is, is very powerful is the ability to add more meanings than you can get from just text. If I'm, if I'm saying to you, yeah, right, and I'm nodding and smiling, then you're going to know that I'm agreeing to you, with you. But if I say, yeah, right, then you're going to know that actually I don't think you're right at all, and I'm being sarcastic. So we get a lot more meaning than from just the words spoken. And the same words can mean different things depending on the context. If we're walking around an art gallery together, and I say to you, oh, that's a nice one, then you're going to think that I like one of the pictures. But if we're going around and say, you are the owner of this greengrocer's stand, and I am a customer, and I point to a cauliflower, and I say exactly the same thing, I say, that's a nice one, you're going to think, oh, she wants to buy this cauliflower and sell me that one. So meanings change according to the context and the roles that people are playing. And that's why um, a good way of thinking about it is with video, we're removing blindfolds. We're taking the blindfolds off and showing much more meaning than students can get from just written text and talking. Um, and we've, what we've got going on with videos is a lot of new digital literacies. Because it's so easy and so much fun to make videos, then we're going to see more and more teacher and learner generated materials. But also, possibly, we're going to see a fall in standards in the videos. If you think about the YouTube videos that you watch, often they're made on cell phones. And some people maintain that we're actually watching some of the biggest reductions in quality of video because of YouTube. Do you agree? Do you think that YouTube has actually decreased the quality of videos? You think, no, Esther. High ratings go to animals and poor quality videos. I mean, yes, the video of your dog. In fact, one of the most popular videos on our site is a video we made of our dog. <laughs> I think in some ways it, it, it means that in terms of production quality, standards have fallen. But in other ways, I think the quality of videos has actually risen because there is so much video there and the creativity of people is unbounded. So there's an expectation, I think, when we turn on a video in our classes from the students that they are going to be entertained and engaged in ways that perhaps they never expected to be before when we turned on old videos. Um, however, I think Peter Vine is right when he said this, because I think there is a, has been a great reduction in production quality. and. I would like to talk to you about how 
we might set about improving the production quality of the videos we make. Because, you know, yes, let's make them entertaining and engaging and um, inventive and all this, but we don't have to, the production quality needn't, needn't suffer. So I'm going to put a video in the chat. Now, this video is four minutes long. Um, we started, it used to be just one minute. This one is actually four minutes. And I'm going to put the link in the chat and ask you to go and watch it. And Tom had a wonderful way of watching it in the, um, in the guy in the um, browser, which I've forgotten now. I think if you click on YouTube somewhere, you can watch it in your browser. But there's the link. See you in four minutes in apps. Thanks, Don Nelly. So the link's in the browser. Can you do this for me? No problem. Thank you. That was Jason. He does a lot of work for me. That was Jay. He makes work. Oh, we'd love to see you. Okay, half an hour. Hi. We're coming in half an hour. You do the kitchen and I'll do the living. Okay. With unspecified activity, we see it's the most common dot. And we use it when we don't say exactly what section we're talking about. So if we're talking about something, nothing, anything, or everything, so we do. You need a hand? Oh, no, I'm checking that down as it's not great. Oh, he wrote it, he wrote things. I'm bored. I have nothing to do. Uh, 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 well, do something. We also use food when we're talking about work. So we do this. We do this. I'm bored. I have nothing to do. We do things like a and I need to do Now let's look at notes. We use notes to talk about creative activities. We need to bring something new into existence. So we also need to talk about things we do.
Love that. Thank you, Vicky. Great. Love them. <laughs> okay. Now, what I'd like to do is show you sort of how we set about making that sort of video and talk about some of the issues that came up in terms of production values and what we were doing. I'm very biased because I'm a writer at heart, but for me, crucial to a good video is the script. You've got to have something interesting or engaging going on. And the way we like to structure um, something like that is we would like to try and start with a gag, um, move on, and finish with a gag at the end, just so that we've sort of kept everybody happy. And all also, we, if we can, we try and put a gag in the middle as well. Um, we shot those individual scenes all over the house, and we move around. We don't stay in one place. I think one of the big pluses of videos is you don't have to sit in the classroom in front of a whiteboard. And there are a lot of you know instructional videos that you see on YouTube where teachers are doing that. And some of them are very good, entertaining, um, engaging teachers, but we we tend to think, well, it's video. We can go anywhere. Let's move around. Um, we'll go out of the house as well and shoot outside shots too when we can. Um, and if we haven't got a set that we need, we try and build it. So for example, here's a shot of um, a business meeting that's going on. In fact, it's just taking place in our living room, but we put on business seats and put an employee's sign on the back behind us. So sometimes it's quite easy to build a little set so it will look like a different location. Um, we just have a little row home in Philadelphia. In fact, we built, a, a, um, we built an airport on the green screen the other day. It's surprising what you can do in a small location with a bit of um, set design and costumes. Um, we um, Another thing you saw going on in that video is it wasn't just video that we made. We also imported other video from other sources. This video I didn't shoot here. I took it from um, a site called Video Blocks. You actually have to pay to subscribe to Video Blocks, but you can buy stock footage. Though they do have free trials that will enable you to download quite a few bits. Um, but looking around, do a search on free stock footage, and you'll come up with all sorts of other little clips that you might be able to insert in your videos as well. Now. Cam we've got to talk about equipment. And let's start with the cam cameras. Um, I don't know if you recognize these sorts of cameras. They were well known and very popular in the past. They were called flips. And in fact, what's happened is the company that used to make them has stopped making them now. And they, they needed to stop making them because they knew that there, there was a sell-by date on them because the quality of cell phones these days has risen so high that it would be competing with them. And in fact, I sent my, my husband out and I said, I want a camera. And I was thinking of a camera like a flip. It was a few years ago. And I said, can you get me a camera that I can put in my handbag, in my purse? And unfortunately, my, my husband had a different perception of what that would involve. And this is what he came back with. Um, well, not sorry, that's his. That's the cell phone I should have showed you before. But this is the camera he came back with. Um, it, it's true. If you take everything out of my purse and handbag, you can fit it in, but you can't put anything else in there with it. Um, so we're actually shooting with with this camera a lot of the time. But this camera isn't nearly as as handy as the little cell phone that we've got, too, which has been very useful as well. Um, you don't need high-end cameras, is, is what I'm saying. Some of the little, you know, your cell phone is often going to do the job very nicely for you. However, I think one of the things you do need is what I'm holding here, which is a tripod. A tripod is really useful. It will stop camera shake. Um, and the other thing about a tripod is it will help you set the shot. 
it will make you think about the framing. It doesn't have to be a camera like this. You can buy little ones that will fit on desks as well, or you, you can put on top of books. They can be quite cheap. This one, I think, was quite expensive. I think it was about $70. Um, but it's great. It pans, it tilts, it does everything we want it to do. We've also got a little tripod like this that I can put on desks sometimes. We don't use it much, though, I must confess. It's got bendy legs. They're called gorilla tripods. You can bend the legs and you can twine them around tree branches and things like this as well. Um, but I must say, we don't use it as much as the proper tripod. Um, I will tell you, Samira, about the software we use in a minute. Now, while we're on the subject of tripods, I mentioned it helps you think about how you're going to frame that shot, the position things are in. This, I think, was a poorly framed shot. That's my fault. If you look instead at, at this shot, which Jay framed, you'll see that it's much better. And what, what he was doing was he was following the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds is, if you put your videos into thirds, you want one of the focal points falling where these lines intersect. And your video is likely to be just more pleasantly balanced somehow. So you don't necessarily want to go full and center. Sometimes you will. But sometimes you'll want to follow that, that old rule of thirds. Another thing, another rule for filmmakers that I think is very useful is the line of action. When you're telling a story in video, you want the story to follow a path. And you could break the line of action if you want, but for, and it will have a, a, an effect that you might want sometimes. But a lot of the time, you'll, you're going to want to, to follow the story in the, in the right way. So let me just put on another video. This is a video. It's got three clips in it. And I want you to watch it and to think about what's going on in these clips. Do you feel, how do you feel when you watch them? Sorry, I'm just having trouble clicking back into the screen. Here we go. Paste, send. OK, a new thing for you to look at. It's got three clips. It's very short how you feel when you watch those clips. When the next train to Boston leaves. Okay. Yes. Um, I didn't do anything to the sound there, Neves. And I'm glad you mentioned the noise in that. Those were the actual sounds that we made that we recorded when we recorded them. And they were quite, we'll talk about sound in a moment, but sound, I think, is very important. Now, the, what, but what about the visual things that were going on? If you looked at clip one, how did it feel? Was there anything that struck you about it? You were lost in space, yes. <laughs> the thing is, the line of action didn't follow. You saw me coming up the stairs. Then I walked across the railway out through the station. And then I went to the ticket clerk. Now, the transition between the first shot and the second shot was all right. But the one with the third shot, did you feel a jolt at all? What about the second one? Did that work? 
Oh, you saw a video about kittens, Diana. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, it might have been more fun. <laughs> Two worked, yes, two should have worked for you. And what you what you had going on there was the line of action, which would have worked in number two and number three, but not in number one. Because in number one, if you look at it in the first shot, I came up the stairs and I passed by the camera coming towards you. And my right cheek was towards the camera. Sorry, my left cheek. Yeah, no, sorry, my right cheek was towards the camera. And then in the next shot, it followed because you saw my right cheek. But it went wrong in the third shot because I had the wrong cheek to camera. There's a continuity that you need to have with these videos where what cheek was to camera in the last shot? And you need to start with that cheek to camera in the next one. And if you follow that rule, you'll find that you don't give your, your viewers any big jolts while they're watching your video. There will be more continuity in your line of action while you're telling a story. Um, OK, we are going to talk about sound, because sound is very important. But let me move on to lighting, which is another thing that is something that will really improve the quality, production quality of videos. Um, these are lights that we use that Jay bought, actually. Jay has a background in television and production. Jay's my husband. Um, and he bought them secondhand on Craigslist. If we were buying years ago, if we were buying them now, we would probably not buy lights like this. And like the cost of lights has come down greatly. Here's a light that we bought quite recently, which Oh, I'm sorry, no, these are some lights that I, I used with a friend. I helped a friend on a shoot, and she had lights like these. They're photographer's lights, um, and they're I thought they were terrific. Um, but this is a light that we bought quite recently, and it's called a fill light. It only costs $20. Um, it has lots of little LED lights inside of it, and if you're shooting into the, if you're shooting someone and the sun is behind them, then their face is going to go black. But if you get very close to them with a light like this, you'll find that it lights up the dark parts of their face and looks look much much better. And Jay loves this light. It only cost twenty dollars, and I thought, wow, that's great. We've spent twenty dollars, and he's having a ball with it. But um, in fact, I spoke too soon because he then went out and bought another one. <laughs> and this one has a lot more LEDs in it. Um, and I think this one actually cost about one hundred and thirty dollars, one hundred and forty dollars. We found it. Um, on eBay somewhere. But um, lights like these are fantastic. And the price has come down in lighting. So you might find that you're able to go out and buy some lights quite cheaply now that will help you do get better lighting for your shots. And it makes a big difference. And the other thing that makes a big difference you raised earlier, which is the microphones you're using. If you just use the sound that you've collected in a shot, you've got to make sure that that sound is really good. Um, what we often do with sound, um, Jay is very hot on sound. Jay is very concerned about it because he actually does professional sound recording. He does voiceovers and things and lots of instructional videos. So he's got a sort of a good mic in, in a little sound booth that quiet room that he uses. But obviously, we can't use that quiet room to go and shoot our videos when we're out shooting them in stations and things, places like that. Um, what we use very commonly is these sorts of mics, which are known as lavalier mics. They're little microphones, little tiny microphones. You can sometimes see, it, see them, unfortunately, on our clipped to our lapels clipped to the collars of our shirts and our ties and that sort of thing. And they're great because they pick up good sound. Unfortunately, you can see them, but I think it's a small price to pay for having good quality sound. 
The thing is, people don't just listen, they also lip read. So to be sure that if you're intelligible, you're going to want to make sure you're picking up good sound. Now you can pick up lavalier mics for something like 18 bucks that have wires. You need to poke the wires up or through all your clothing. So perhaps they'll go up your trouser leg and through your shirt before they appear on your collar. Or when you when you get hooked on this, and hopefully you will, you'll find that you need to go out and buy yourself some wireless mics. These little lapel works can work on a wireless system too, but that's more expensive. Um, and yes, we're on a green screen here. Um, and the um, green screens are another thing I'm very enthusiastic about. Um, I use green screens a lot. And here you can see me in my house. We only have a little house. The green screen is about nine feet wide. And you can see that it fills up practically the whole of our living room here. But the thing about this is I can crop myself in the editing software. Make Make the background disappear, and then I can put up the words and the text that you saw earlier. And it doesn't just have to be text that can go here. If we're doing instructional videos, we can put other video in the place where the, where the writing is here. Or we can put still shots, photographs, stills photographs. So it, you, can, you have a lot of instructional possibilities if you're using a green screen. Um, Here's an example, right, here's Jay on a green screen, and he's recording there, and what we did was he, we cropped him, we took the green out, because the green is very different to skin tones with our editing software, and we were able to build this. There he is, exactly that shot, but he's now a news presenter in a news studio. So green screens has wonderful possibilities. Um, I just want to show you this shot again. <laughs> Here's something that you want to go out and buy. Can you see a little bit of black tape in that picture? That is gaffer tape, and it's the most wonderful sticky tape you can imagine. It's quite expensive. You have to pay, and you don't want to buy the cheap stuff. It costs something like $25 for a roll of it. But it's brilliant, because you can stick the green screen to your chair or whatever you need to do to make your set work. And you will have so much fun with gaffer tape. So just a word in there for gaffer tape. Um, I'll show you something here of, um, uh, I'd just like to show you, a, I hope I'm going to post the right link in the comments of what you can do with green screen. Um, let me show you, I hope I'm showing you the right one. Gosh, I'm not sure. I might be showing you the wrong, posting the wrong link in here. Let's, I'll just check and let's. Yeah, I better just check and see if it's the right link. Hang on, let me have a look. Go to Media Player. And That. Okay. Fingers crossed it's the right one. Try that and see. Here's the link. Click that and we'll see if it's the right one. And if
wrong one. <laughs> Never mind. What she did anyway. <laughs> okay, so now what, what went on there is, is something else that I wanted to tell you about. I mentioned about stock footage that you can import into your videos, but the other thing you can do is you can use public domain films, and I, I, you noticed in the do and make clip that I was using public domain footage for this clip here. Um, but also, of course, the White House has some public domain footage. So what you saw there was a video which I made, which was public domain footage inserted with footage that we shot at home. Um, if you, this is an, on the screen, you can see archive.org link. And they have lots of old movies there. I try to stick to movies that are pre-1940 or pre-1960 there, because even though things might be in the public domain, you might have directors or music or other things that you need to be, that are not in the public domain within that clip that you're going to use in your videos. Um, but it will be, um, but but, but yes, public domain footage is something you might want to, to use in your videos. I'll show you the green screen video that I wanted to show you earlier. But first, let's talk a little bit about editing. Um, I, edit, I started off editing the videos I make in Windows Live. If you're an Apple user, iMovie is great. These are free programs that come with your, um, that come with your computer. They're fantastic. Um, I then graduated, and this is the program I use now. It's called Adobe Premiere Pro. It's very like Final Cut Pro. Um, basically, all video editing software programs work in the same way. You have a timeline at the bottom, and those little boxes that you can see in that timeline line are all boxes. Okay. Now, And they last different lengths of times. Some of them have transitions. There are lots of cool transitions that you can use there to link from one to the other. Um, so that's, that's the editing software that I use. Um, I think another thing I want to say about video that's very important is, as well as the tools, you want people to help you. Collaboration is really, really useful with video. And sometimes we ask people to help us who we don't know. Um, we try to get signed model releases from them just to make sure that they'll allow us to use the videos. Um, 
And also, you know, if ever we want to give them to a school or organization that I'm sure is, have we got copyright for all the tips we use? Have we got releases from the models, the people who are appearing in our videos? So we do that. Um, green screen, I showed you the wrong video earlier. I'll just show you one, and then hopefully we've got a little bit of time for questions. Let me pull up my thing. This is one that we made recently. Um, I had a problem. We were approached and asked to make video in an airport. Now, it's actually quite difficult sometimes to get permission to film in different places. We made a video in Station, 30th Street Station, and that was we had to get permission to do that. And trying to get permission from an airport was much, much more difficult. So we built a set in our living room. And you know, I just showed you a picture showing you how small our living room was. But let me just show you the first two minutes. If you watch this, you'll see this, and, and I'll answer any questions when um, you've watched it. So there's another link for you, just a couple of minutes. Where did we check in? Over there. Okay, so you can you can see that basically we were following a lot of the things I've been talking about there today in that clip. Um, we used a bit of stock footage to set the scene. We shot on the green screen using our lights and wireless mics. We um, we followed the rule of the line of action rule, and the right cheeks were passing by the right side of the camera as we went along. Um, and I was surprised, actually, that we were able to do that in our tiny little living room. <laughs> but it sort of worked. Um, when you finish making your videos, you're going to want to distribute them. We have a YouTube channel. Um, you get all sorts of comments. People are usually very grateful, and they ask questions and interact. And sometimes you get people who tell you, you know, how much they hated your video as well. Hey, it's YouTube. But um, 
we all so if there is any any questions i'm so sorry i haven't been following been able to follow the chat as well but if you want to repeat them now i'd be very happy to to respond a few questions there uh, vicky what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop um the chat so i can make it larger Great. you'll be able to see this yeah uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I certainly can. Um, some points were that it's kind of difficult, and uh, how much time do you have to invest in each video? Um, oh, here's a question. What other software you use to make your videos? I think you mentioned um, the editing for yes, Adobe. Yes, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, um, but I used to use Windows Live, which is the free program and a great one to learn on um, and uh, there are lots of different video editing packages around um, I don't know what other ones other people use perhaps they'd like to type them in the chat chat iMovie is great if you're an Apple uh, user was, too yeah I, there was a comment there about uh, self-study I think John mentioned that that the videos are kind of self-study. Um, do you have courses or something that goes with the videos for participants or for students? Or I do. Or, or I do. In fact, yeah. on I have some of the videos. Um, I've made some materials where you know the students can watch them and then they can try and recall the words that they see. This comes from a video that I was unable to show you, unfortunately but it's practicing you know little exercises that go with them which are available on I'll, I'll put the site in here um, it the site is simpleenglishvideos.com simpleenglishvideos.com and uh, what, what's it called it's called store we've got them up there and we have a store there where we put some of these things up um, time somebody if somebody mentioned time I mean time is always the thing you know I have other jobs that I have to do you know I teach and I do all sorts of write other courses for people and this sort of thing as well so video making isn't my full-time job um, so finding time to do it is is one of the biggest things i try to get organized about it so i will if we've set up the lights for a particular scene i will try to see shoot several scenes for different videos while we're set up in that location um it just makes it a bit more efficient because setting up the lights is actually one of the things and audio getting the audio right is one of the things that actually takes the most time if you want to improve the production quality uh, Vicky I had a question thank you I had a question about courses can would you consider setting up a course for teachers and others uh, to learn step by step and practice actually a practical course on how to create videos uh, you know for for not professional as yours, but something that we can work with. Uh, with our yes, I'm, in fact, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking of writing such a course. And um, one of the things as I was pulling this talk together um, about some of, the, some of the issues with it, um, it kept running through my mind that this perhaps would be better done as a course where people could go and look at you know, it's worth spending a little while. I, I was very hurried today telling you about things like cameras and lighting and this sort of thing. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to pick up. And a lot of it, though, as well, Nelly, I think, is go out and do it. You know, I've learned so much just by trying it and doing it. And you get better with each video. And there's nothing like doing it for for learning in on the job on the go and it's so satisfying you know because you pick up new skills all the time you learn how to do new things i think i think the other thing about video making you know is it is an enormous amount of fun and enjoy it 
<laughs> Absolutely. We hire you. In other words, organization or private, I mean, are you affordable for, for say, teachers if I want something? Um, um, I, I have made, I do make, all, do I do make course, videos course. for different organizations. Um, I've done videos for um, the consultancy and for the British Council. And also I've made videos for, uh, that video that you saw of an airline actually was a pilot video because we were approached by an airline who would like to do some training for their staff. Um, how much I cost it depends on really how long it's going to take me. Um, so, I mean, you know, if you go out and hire professional videos, then they can cost something like three thousand dollars a minute or more. Um, I'm much cheaper, you know. Even if it's a very heavily edited video, it's likely to come in at less than a thousand a minute. But if it's heavily animated and there's a lot of work in it, it can, you know, you can wind up. These videos can wind up costing a thousand dollars of time. Um, it's looking for ways. It's surprising, you know, estimating how long a video is going to take before it happens is sometimes quite hard until it's made and then you know how long it took. Um, I made a little video as a promotional thing for a course I was going to run in just about two hours the other night. It was just animated text. Look out for it. It's a course that I'm running for ITD. ITDI is the name of the organization, or I, I did that wrongly, it should be like that. Um, the International Tre Teacher Development Institute, and I'm running a course there on business English. And I, I made a little animated text video. If you, I'm sure you'll find it if you go to their site. And it took me a couple of hours, that was all. But then I also made a video for WizIQ. Um, last week, and it must have taken oh, oh days and days of work. So it's it's hard to say. Um, to be applicable to language way. learning, actually, John, there are lots of teachers on YouTube who are language teachers, where they're standing and lecturing in the sort of style of the Khan economy, and some of them are very good when they're engaging teachers. Um, it's not something I've ever tried to do because perhaps I'm not so good when I'm just standing and lecturing. But um, I, I mean, for me, one of the cool things about video is I can take the students out of the classroom into the real world so they can see language in context. So it's just not a style of video that I've been very interested in making personally. But yes, there are some, lots of good examples on YouTube of teachers doing it. Vicky, your work is very different, but I'm thinking from real English. Are you familiar I've with I've done real some English videos similar Mike? to those, um, but I think Mike's doing such a good. I, I think love, Mike's doing I such a good that. job of it. Um, Mike will go out with a um, with a microphone and he'll interview people and record what they say and then collect the language together. And it's very effective, very interesting, very engaging, because he finds engaging people to interview. Um, and I'm interested in that, but I, and I've done some videos like that. Um, I think I'm more interested in pragmatics and discourse and sociolinguistics, so um, I'll want to have longer, I, I don't want to stick to one spoken genre. You know, the interview is one spoken genre. Somebody asks a question, you respond. And um, but it's, I think they're great and well worth checking out. So do go look at Real English. I think they're lovely. And there's a lot I could, I've learned from about the quality. Yeah, but there there are problems with the quality, even with his latest um, videos that he just did in California, I believe. And looking at the text, I mean, you must have noticed uh, little things that he noticed too. The reason I'm asking is because I think there's more of an audience. That's just my take. Maybe I'm wrong. More of an audience for that kind of thing. And and what you're doing is quality. And it seems to me that YouTube does not, or at least 
the people who um, are out there on YouTube are not really going in for quality. They're going in for something that's fast, that, uh, I think, you know, yeah, I think I think it might be you know the nature of the times we're living in, because there there was an acceptance of the falling production quality on YouTube. But you know, I think that's going to change, and I think it, it, what what you see on YouTube at the moment, one of the big parameters by way uh, by which videos come up in YouTube is number of hits. But actually, that's determined by watch time, how many people how many minutes are being watched on your channel so people who have been doing things a long time and have a lot of material tend to um, have larger watch time and so they'll appear more in YouTube searches whereas obviously I've been focused on making videos one minute long or something like that and and that isn't going to improve your watch time statistics but um, I think it would change because I think Ultimately, people will want quality, and there will be an expectation for, you know, entertainment, engagement, this sort of thing. Um, I think standards are rising all the time, and we'll see things change. And a curi another curious thing about it is, although we've been focused on quality, um, I mean, we haven't been terribly focused on trying to to get hits on our YouTube channel, but we have found that we've been constantly engaged in work, you know, with people saying, can you make a video on this? Can you do a video on that? Um, so uh, it's not just YouTube, if you know what I mean. If you're making videos, YouTube isn't your only outlet. There can be all sorts of places where they could go. Curious is an interesting site. I don't know if you've been to curious.com. Um, I haven't done much for them yet, but they approach me asking for, this is where teachers can go and teach all sorts of subjects. And I, I do plan when I have time to, to put material, more material on there. But um, they have sort of nicely produced videos by teachers. They've got funding, so they're offering teachers $1,000 to produce a course for them. Um, and they're, they're just a sort of slightly higher quality level than you'll find necessarily on YouTube. Vimeo has, um, that's right, I mean Vimeo has a higher sort of streaming quality than YouTube. Um, but of course it's not, the thing about YouTube, it's the number two, I think it's the second largest search engine on the web. I mean, that's powerful. Um, so I'm sorry, I've gone over time. I'm sorry we had so many. Thank you all for hanging on in here. Yeah, and all your questions. What's the questions, Vicky, are about um, time? Something time. Like, time. Yes, if you take something. How long? Sorry. Time. <clears throat> sorry. If you take something like the make and do video, um, I actually made that video probably over about two months because I didn't do it all at once. I would go off and we'd have an idea for a little gag and then we'd shoot that. And while the cameras were set up, we'd shoot some other stuff we needed in the kitchen or in the living room or wherever. So um, I'm not actually sure how long it took to make. Um, if, I, if, if I ask Jay, to set up the cameras, it can take two hours just to set the cameras up because he's very concerned about doing it right. If I go and set the cameras up, <laughs> the shot won't be as good, but I'll do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> um, it's usually better if Jay does it, obviously. Um, You're lucky. You're very lucky that you can work well, together like Well, you know, Jay has so been a benefits. huge source of know-how for me. Um, I'm just very lucky that I've been able to draw on it because he has a lot of experience in. He started off in television. He was a he, he was actually on camera. He was a television reporter for CBS, but then he had his own video and television 
uh, sorry, a video and film company. So he was, and he was producing a lot of instructional videos. So um, these days, I mean, the equipment that we've got, it may look wonderful to you. To him, it looks very sort of uh, amateurish, but, um, and he loves it when he can go out and buy new light, this sort of thing, and upgrade things a bit. Um, but, you know, having that sort of knowledge and know-how has been really handy. But I've also learned a lot from watching other people's videos and from sharing ideas with other video makers. And that's why I think um, collaboration is so cool. You know, I was lucky Rachel of Rachel's English has actually moved to Philadelphia so we can help one another out on shoots, that sort of thing. But we learn from one another as we do it. So if anybody comes to Philadelphia and I'll make you appear on camera and get a little clip from you. <laughs> wow, what a great idea. I was there for TESOL <laughs> ah, I was ago. On, I was I, at TESOL, I was just down the road from where I live. I miss. Yeah. I'll make you a cup of tea for sure, Tom. <laughs> huh. All right. Great. If Tom could only get out of Venezuela, that would be wonderful. Tom, you put a link Thanks, earlier, which I unfortunately I, I didn't dare follow, but you put a link to a video that you made, and I'd love to go and watch it. And has anybody else made videos that they could share the links here in the chat? I'd love to go and see some of them. So much everyone and thank you so much we, we can go on but i really think that a, a course on creating videos would really really be uh something that everyone would benefit and of course a paid course we don't expect it to be free oh great i'll i'll go watch the course the videos thank you thank you thank you thank you so much and everyone there, you can subscribe to uh, Vicky's Simple English. I am subscribed and I enjoy every time I, you get it, notifications in your inbox telling you another video was added. And it's always such a joy, Vicky. So I want to thank you and Jay and That's a pleasure. everyone. Who's okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for...